Hi, this is Derek the Knitwit. Thanks for dropping in to check out my video today. If you're new, welcome. And if you're my loyal subscribers, welcome back. So, as far as whips go today, this. I've started on the anatomical heart. And I am, let's find my thing. Oh, come on. My computer's... I just got connected to Wi-Fi a couple minutes ago, so it's giving me grief. And Google Drive, crochet. Oh, I am on. I'm about to start row seven. So yeah, I just got started. Uh, went out with my sister a couple times. We did go to Paris, Parisina. I'm not sure. Um, fabric shop that they had a little bit of yarn and the sign made it look like it was 20 pesos a thing and that was for the kitty soft brand I still think that's the creepiest name I hate saying kitty soft I swear it makes me sound like a pedo and um, that was the other yarn like the um the of course you know there's some red heart yarn and I can't remember some of the other ones. I, ha I did do a video on that. Um, but I spent more on yarn than I expected to. Don't we all? Uh, but I'm happy with it. I'm happy with what I got. Um, I've got some ideas on stuff. And um, actually I have an idea for every single bit of the yarn that I bought. And I got a couple little um, bags to use. You know, that can hold... Um, Stitch markers and project bags type things, you know, souvenir -y stuff. And I still have yet to get in the ocean, of course. Okay, so technically I've only been here 24 hours. And I was close to it just to go stick my feet in it today. And it started sprinkling. So we're like, okay, let's just, we'll just go back. We'll, we'll do it some other day. Because it wasn't beach, you know, it wasn't like right at the beach. It was more of a, you know, you step off. Uh, you know, steps down into it, and you step off into like, and you're like, you know, knee high or high, or thigh high, you know. And I was like, okay, I don't want that much water. And so we turn around, and it starts raining hard to come back to the house, and it starts raining harder. And so we're not that far from the house, but we're just going to shortcut through the parking garage. And I asked my sister, I said, well, how long do you think it'll rain? Should we wait to see if it lets up? And she's like, oh, it's probably going to rain for a while. I'm like, okay. She's like, well, let's take a taxi. Well, we can't take a taxi. We spent all of the cash that we had on us, both American dollars and pesos. Now, okay, yeah, we could have taken a taxi and then me sat in the taxi while she ran to the, and got money to come back and pay for it. But that's just a hassle. And it's only a couple blocks. And you know what? Shit flows. Not that we don't melt. We're not going to melt. Um, and so I'm like, okay, let's just go. You know, we, yeah, I know you're going to be a little cold, but get over it, you know. We don't really need to spend money to take a taxi, you know, two blocks, maybe three. Um, and the taxis, I mean, I'm sure it's annoying for them, but the taxis are kind of used to that, especially leaving from the mega, mega is the grocery store. Um, so we leave, we walk, and as soon as we get to the one part that has a, um, a covered walkway that, you know, where we don't have to walk in the rain, and I start walking under it, and my shoes, my little rubber flip-flops, are making these little fart noises with every step. And, um, yes, they were fart noises from the shoes, not from me. And so we get there, walking, and, and the rain stops. It completely stopped raining. We were out in it long enough to get soaked. We could have waited three minutes or less at Mega and been out of the rain. Although it just did a nice little downpour lasting about 10 or 15 minutes. But it was a heavy little downpour. Um, so I'm sure if I go out there, the palm trees may have dropped some more leaves. Which is kind of fun if you get to watch them drop. Because it's not like you know watching a little leaf drop. It's this huge palm frond that just goes thump. And you just really don't want to be underneath it. I mean, it's not like it's going to kill you. It's just not going to be a fun 10 minutes while you're you know, rubbing your head good now. So, um, okay. Now here's for my, my stupid thing for the day. Probably not for the day. I went 
and you know, before I left, I made sure, you know, I found some, a couple knitting patterns, a couple crochet patterns, printed them out, put in my sleeves, got my little um, post note flags so that I can keep track of where I am on the pattern. Got it all set up. I'm pretty sure it's still sitting on my couch. Got its own little nice folder, everything. I forgot it, but I have them downloaded on my computer. So I can, I'm doing that. I don't know if y'all can see that. Watching and um, working through my pattern. And that is the Crochet Anatomical Human Heart. And I, by Kyla Raymakers. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I've already given y'all the links to it. So I am didn't give you the whole, you didn't see the whole pattern. But you did see the main body of it. Um, so I'm working on that. That's, that's what this is. Making a heart that way. Hang on just a second. What? I'm making a video. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got some more AMA questions today. And of course, like always, I'll post links to these people to their, their channel and in the description down below. So let's see. I am looking at. Okay, Madonna, I've already done you. Okay, Gloria S. asks if me or my sister speak any Spanish. I speak enough Spanish to be able to comfortably order at Taco Bell. There are some words I understand, you know, most, you know, some, sometimes the numbers, they talk. Okay, I talk fast, and I think they talk fast. So they sometimes, you know... It's hard sometimes to understand what numbers they're saying because I can't always think as fast as they can speak. Um, my sister speaks more Spanish than I do. Sometimes, sometimes I can understand a little bit more than what you know I can get back to them. A lot of people down here do speak um, English because you know it's it is a tourist town, and I mean even though you know where I'm staying is a residential part of the town, you know we're not far from the tourist drag. So, a lot of people, like, just about everybody at, um, you know, th that work, like, the grocery stores or the different stores around here speak English as well. And one of the stores, Ted Rowley's, which I thought for the longest time my sister was calling it Ted Rowley's, um, and it's C-H-E-D-R-A-U-I, apostrophe S, um, they actually have a bilingual line, and... One of the main things that, that I learned you know, last year that, you know, and it was reinforced again already, I mean, when you think about people that immigrate to the United States and they're still speaking their primary language, the language that they learned first, whether it is Spanish, whether it's German, whether it is, you know, a Middle Eastern language that, you know, I mean, there's a million of them that I don't know because I grew up in Oklahoma with our public schools and I'm geographically stupid. Um, think about how hard it is. Uh, English is one of the hardest languages to learn. And yeah, a lot of schools, they're taught English along with the their national language. Like, you know, it's not like they choose Spanish as an elective. It's, they're taught English from, you know, from grade school, you know, from primary school. But still, think about the ones that maybe go, or from a smaller area, or, you know, whatnot, that don't speak the language. And then they move to the United States, and they're having to learn it by immersion, you know. My thing is, how, I'm just amazed the fact that they don't have a complete meltdown and, Go bonkers. It's hard <coughs> to learn a language, especially the older you are when you start learning it. I honestly think, learn, when I was in junior high, when I was in school, you know, seventh grade was the, or I think it was seventh grade, was the, seventh or eighth grade, was, eight, seventh or eighth grade was the earliest that you could learn a foreign language. I'm sure I'm thinking they teach it younger now, but honestly, by you know by that age 
most people, their brain connections, whatnot, that make it easy for them to learn foreign languages have severed or finished or whatnot, but it's, it's not, they're past that age where it's super easy. Or not super easy, but, you know, easier. Um, so anytime somebody immigrates to the United States and can speak their language plus English, even if their English is broken or limited, they're already one up on me. I know English. I have to, and anything else than that, I have to rely on Google Translate to communicate. And, you know, other countries, they make it a priority that they learn other countries, it's common in other countries to get people that are bilingual or trilingual or multilingual. Um, it's not common in the United States. If you are a someone that was born in the United States to parents who were either immigrated at a young age or were born here, you know, so... Yeah, do I all that for do I speak any Spanish? I can count to ten, and I I I bragged on the first day of kindergarten to my kindergarten teacher that I could count to ten in Spanish, and I haven't really progressed much with that. I did Duolingo for a while and um, managed to escape that evil owl, but. I would like to learn a foreign language, but at this point, honestly, I would rather learn sign language than any other language because, I mean, I can use Google Translate and as long as they can read, you know, or I could use Google Translate to communicate with someone. But honestly, actually, if I, learned, if I learned how to speak, if I got comfortable and fluent with sign language, I probably would just quit talking half the time, 90% of the time. Okay, let's see. Loopy Ange, A-N-G-E, asks, How long have I been knitting and crocheting for? We went over that in video a couple days ago. Um, knitting for... Knitting with any skill for about a year crocheting since this summer. Which do you find the most challenging? Well, I still, I can crochet in the round, but I can't knit the round, so I'm going to go with knitting is the most challenging, <coughs> primarily just because of that, um, but there are plenty of crocheting techniques and whatnot that I don't know, so, in, you know, it's still, I'm not, I'm not saying crocheting is easy at all, I'm just saying I didn't get a chance to learn the knitting in the round, knitting in the round, and I look at some of these people that knit, and they've got like four or five needle, needle, knitting needles going, and I'm just, um, what are you doing? You know, so, yeah. When did I learn to read patterns? Um, pretty much when I took that knitting course in, sorry about my finger there, at the Votech. They helped us reading pitter, patterns. Um. Occasionally, I still get patterns that I don't quite understand. Sometimes I have found reading it out loud a couple times. It there's something about hearing it as opposed to just seeing it that sometimes it makes it make sense. And um, I have this pattern, the ideal sphere pattern, that how they wrote it. Just I had never seen anyone write write a pattern like they did, and I was like, was well, now all of a sudden I'm starting to see it, but I just it. It did not make sense for the longest time because I was, and part of that was coming from, I think, from how I learned the patterns I'd found knitting versus how they were written crocheting. And I think that there's a little bit of a different mindset. So, um, and that kind of comes across a little bit with how patterns are written. I'm not saying either one's, you know, better than the other. It's just sometimes it's like, Listening to someone in the you know southern U.S. speak, and then going to listen to someone from Minnesota speaking, and um, yes, I'm picking on you, Minnesota. Love you guys. Um, but listening to the difference in accents, they're saying the same thing, 
but they sound a whole lot different. So, um, now, as far as following like the charts on patterns, I finally learned how to do that um, with the lady that I occasionally take the accidental private lesson with. You know, when that I'm the only one that signed up for a class, she taught me how to how to read a chart. I haven't tried making a crochet pattern or crochet object just by following a chart, but I'm com com I'm not confident in my ability to come up with a comfort you know speak comfortably. I am comfortable enough with the concept of it that I am confident I could figure it out if I needed to. So okay. And let's see. Sabrina, I love Sabrina. She always makes these wonderful comments on my videos and I look forward to seeing what she's going to say about each one. And I am about to butcher her last name. But it lo I always look at it and read Melodious. Which, honestly, it could be close. Or my phonics could be failing me and that could be something completely off the wall. But I love listening to her talk on her videos and I love... Um, I love the comments she leaves. And she says, What is my favorite thing to crochet or knit? <coughs> Toys, stuffed animals, plushies, fun things. And things that are kind of off the wall. Those are what I like to do. But I also like to fall back on scarves and blankets. Things that are just repetitive. And it's the same thing over and over again. Because you get... I mean, it's just... The, the bigger projects that are... that you know, are repetitive, they're great for kind of like mindfulness, you know, meditation, you're just, it's the same thing, and it slows my mind down, and, you know, they're fun, but they do take a long time, but I like doing the emigurumi, or the different, you know, the toys and novelty things, they go faster, and um, so you feel that, you know, the productivity is higher on those because you know you see this, you see the the pattern emerging a lot quicker. So, uh, but I, I mean, I like both things. But I think if I had to pick one thing that I was only allowed one category of thing to knit from here on out for the rest of my life, I'd probably go with amigurumi or toys. So, and do I follow patterns or charts? I follow patterns. I'm not yet to the point where I'm comfortable. Sorry, I'm looking off to the side. I keep forgetting to look at the camera and I end up looking at the, the display screen and cover that up and see if that's better. Um, so now I completely look off the screen. I w I'm hoping to eventually get to the point where I can freehand a, a project and I think I'm getting there. I'm learning some of the concepts like how to do increases on crocheting and how, how to decrease them, you know, how to do like the circles that eventually turn into the balls to where eventually I could make my own patterns I am little miss is still steadily exploring over here I'm almost to the point you know, like I think that my Christmas hat from hell pattern I adapted that to where you could do it freehand pretty much freehand without a um, without following a pattern and I may do a tutorial on that um, I may also try and write it up you know, do another one just uh, and then just keep track of everything so I can, um, you know, actually create a pattern. Because I think it would be nice to say, hey, this here's this pattern that I made. So, and let's see. And Sabrina, see, you know, go ahead, ask, it, ask all the questions you want. You know, I can always just put on a comment if you have a question you want me to answer on video, just put AMA on it. <coughs> and I'll answer it on a video. Okay. Jackie Summers asks, while I crochet or knit, do I prefer to have music playing or TV on or just quiet concentration? I, 90% of the time, have YouTube playing. And I'm going through my watch list queue. So, like, when people, when all you guys have channels and videos pop up, and my phone will notify me when, you, when a video posts. So that's why, how I can sometimes, I can be super quick and I'm in there right off the bat. 
um, depending on, you know, like if it's a live or if it's something that I can tell by the title is time sensitive, I'll jump in there right off the bat. Otherwise, it goes into my watch later queue. And right now I've got 75 videos in it, so I'm a little bit behind, which that's only a couple days behind, you know, behind the when videos are posted. There for a while, I was running about a week to 10 days behind, but when I had like 300 videos in queue, but I've got them all. You know, all you guys doing Vlogmas just about killed me. But um, I'm caught, fairly well caught up. I was down to 30-something before I come to Mexico, so these are all the videos that have added since um, I started traveling yesterday morning. And now when I am on the... On the um, the city bus, I'm usually listening to an audiobook and well well I crochet and same thing you know, like when I'm in the waiting rooms whatnot. So I usually listen to things. I found that if I just concentrate on knitting or crocheting with doing nothing but just making it, I get tired of it and I, I wanna hurry up and get more and I wanna get it done and I, I wanna get through it. And so it's not as fun. And part of that, I think, is because my mind's not engaged, and I absolutely hate being bored. And I've hated being bored since I was a little kid. Um, but if I have something to keep my brain occupied, then I enjoy the process. I may miss some of what's being said on TV, but I'm, well, have the ability to rewind videos. So I get there eventually. And... Um, now, if I'm having a part where I just absolutely cannot figure out, like, a line of the instruction but whatnot, I'll stop the video or the audiobook until I get it figured out. But it's not, um, you know, I don't usually have that very often, so I usually have something going on. Okay. And let's see, okay, in Charlene Crochet Corner, this is going to be the last one for this video because I see my timer is showing me I'm at like 16 minutes already and I still got some video clips from today to add on. So yeah, when I went out um, walking with my sister, but Charlene says, let's see, she asks, if I can believe she's never watched Doctor Who, well, <coughs> I can. There's a lot of people that, especially if, they're not into science fiction. You know, they, you know, they're, okay, apparently I set off something. So anyway, so let me go back. Charlene asked if I would send her a postcard. If I have, I will. I've got it already picked out. I just got to find a post office around here. One person said we have far enough away we had to drive Google Maps so there's one closer. I figure we'll ask someone else. So anyway, so that is it for today. Um, I will, like I said, I'm, I've got videos of me um, out walking around, and I will post those, and I will see you guys tomorrow. High speed Ferris wheel. Okay, I'm at my first stop, Parasina, and they have yarn and loom stuff, and they have the the tips that I like. So yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna cost some damage in here. Okay, here's another yarn section. These are all 20 pesos, which is just a little over a dollar. Oh, look at this. Oh, and it's, so, oh, it's Red Heart Soft. So yeah, this is good stuff. This is Waterscape. It's a size four. I'm gonna get a couple of those. What is a basket? I think is there it? is one. Oh, I know I'm in trouble. Yeah. Oh. We're in everybody's way. Yeah, because this has got really yards. Two hundred and four yards in this. Where are you making? 
Well, there's all kind of stuff. I can make shawls and scarves and hats. Oh, and I need some, oh, this is Kitty Soft. Not as soft as the Red Heart Soft, but it's still pretty soft. It is white or Blanco, but yeah. And where's the amount in here? Yeah, this is going to be acrylic. You see the that 50 grams, so that's a decent amount, and that's probably going to help it mark it here. Oh, look at this purple! This purple looks so blue. That is a very purple, like grape purple. And I know it looks blue, but it is. It is it's as purple as you can imagine. See my, my stack going here? Okay, I'm gonna bet these aren't. Mm. And more Red Heart Super Saver. 141 grams, which would be 260 yards. Neon flag. That might be fun. We'll see how much that is. What is this down here? This has got, look how fine this is. Nope, oh, here's one with a label. Hundred percent cotton, mer uh, mercerized cotton. Let's see. I would have to get out my translate thing. I'm gonna fall over now. I'm gonna take you with me. And this is kind of a lime green color, which actually looks like that. Green. Yep. Okay. Yeah, like green. Jones green. Yep. This is picture crayon green. That's that same stuff, but it was. So it's going to be. Oh, this is acrylic. So not all of this down here, it's cotton. Ooh, look at this one. Oh, no, that's just fuzz on it. I thought it was gonna have colors in it. Red heart. Light gray. With a red heart soft. Super baby. This is acrylic. Look at that. Kind of a pale lime green. This is bright. <clears throat> Look how bright that one is. It's brighter than my future. <laughs> uh, huh, huh. Yeah. Did you see the red one in there? Yeah. And there's a that pink's pretty bright too. There wanna give your, your your baby like nightmares of that fear, that's how you start the fear of clowns and babies, is you put those two together. Uh. Ah, I'm stuck to the red. Okay. Look okay, at this. Okay, I'm sorry, but calling it kitty soft, I just makes me feel like a pedo. This is a pretty, kind of a peach color. An ivory. Okay, and I'm going to put you guys on pause so I can go through some more of this stuff. This is, is this the main square? Yeah. Yep. This is the main square with all the shops, mainly touristy stuff. Live music. That's probably going to get me copyrighted. Well, I'm not monetized. They can copyright strike me all they want.
these are hammocks, like the one I slept in last night. <laughs> the square in the daylight. There's a fountain over there somewhere that does um, water, you know, it's on a timer and it does different, like, you know, patterns and whatnot, which is kind of cool. See, then the, as I make y'all seasick, there's, it goes more that way. It's cool, and the ocean is that way. I've already worn my sister out this morning. And there's more places that the, oh, there's the tower, the clock tower. <coughs> there's more, there goes my voice. More little stalls that are just tucked in little corners everywhere. We'll, I'll see if I can get my sister to have the energy to go down on Mail Guard a little bit, show you the strip. Right there. Look what I found. Melgar goes that way. There's the ocean. That's the pier where all the cruise ships and ferries might not come in. And it keeps going that way for long distance. So let's see. And just about every place out here will offer free shots of tequila and I'm going to enjoy. Ice cream. Hmm. Welcome to Cozumel's shop. Oh, excuse us. Del Sol. Oh, you recording? So now you're in a perfect time. Check. The t shirts. You're going to come closer. Come eat. One, white, and cutter. Woohoo! Just light up in the sunlight!